Thank you to my patrons, Will Hamilton and Greg Condor, for supporting me on Patreon. What's going on, YouTube? It's Calciloscope. I'm back with another one. In today's video, we're going to be making a D'Angelo Russell poster design. I'll be taking these photos of D'Angelo Russell that you see on screen right here and putting them together. I want to show you guys that Photoshop is not too daunting. And early on in the game, you can make great poster designs. And how do we tie everything together to make the poster design look very balanced and impressive to a viewer? So the first thing you really need to understand is how exactly do we mask? Masking is taking a full image and cutting out the part that you want to showcase or you want to work on. And obviously in this case, we want to take D'Angelo Russell out of the frame. So what I like to do is go over to the left side right here in this something called object selection tool. I found a really good regimen of using this. So just click and hold and then it's going to be right here, object selection tool. Then you're going to click onto that. Now up here in the top where my mouse is, you have these different selections. The only two that you're going to use, I promise you, when you're masking, you always want to have combined shapes on. It's that double filled rectangle. This allows you to keep stacking on shapes and making new selections without losing track of any of them. And I see the selection. If anything was a little bit too excess or anything like that, if you didn't have combined shapes on, it would create a whole new mask. Hit Q again, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this layer mask icon, and this is going to, it's going to take our selection and cut it out from the image. So hit the layer mask, and then you see we have our mask right here. What I'll do after that so that I have a solid background, I can really look at the mask is I hold down command or control, and I click on this add layer sign. Then I go to the solid fill color, which is right here on this drop down, and I click to the solid color. And I'm gonna drop my background to something like a red. So let's go back to our move tool with V and see how I have this a good amount of fringes around. We wanna clean that up before we really get into it. So go to your layer mask. It has the black with the white silhouette. Always remember that black is what hides on layer mask and white is filled. So see that white is filled. So that's how you know that is where the mask is. So we're gonna double click on that though. Now we're gonna be in our window that we can refine edge tool. So click the refine edge tool right here. And then make sure you just have a kind of a small brush size. If you wanna change your brush size, you can hit the brackets and make sure that it's soft. So make sure your brush hardness is a little bit softer. Probably actually just go to zero. Never mind about a little bit of hardness. And then we're gonna click and drag to get some of these chinny chin chin hairs off my guy right here, D'Angelo Russell. And then I'm just gonna try to make the outside as well, just a little bit more. Go to your lasso tool. If you have a little bit of watermark left, polygon lasso tool. And you can just click, hold down shift, it'll make a straight line. And just click around until you can come back to the center where you have now a mask when you double click and you enclose that shape. I also have combined shapes on here because if I do that, see how when I have combined shapes on, I can keep adding to the selections and there's a new selection each time. If I don't have combined shapes on and I have the singular block, I can make a selection, but then once I make a new selection, that selection disappears. Then after you're done with that, you hit shift F5. If you're on the Mac, you're going to hit shift backspace, but you're going to do a little thing called content aware and that's going to fill in that spot where any little watermark is left behind or you know if you just want to clean something up on the mask so the last thing that i'm going to do with this mask before we are done always examine if you want to clean up a little bit of the edges or anything like that like on the side you just want to make it cleaner just use your brush and brush away some of the edges you want to have your hardness back to around 100 again clean up around the edges like this take a brush that i'm going to link below it's called the concept art brush pack when you guys get this pack the brush will be called pelt 3 i changed the name to hairbrush 01 i just right click and then you can rename your brush i would do that but i like to use this brush and painting black on the layer mask just to make the hair look a little bit more texturized a little bit of a more realistic touch to it so go download it in the description of this video you can have your opacity very high again i have mine on 100 because we really are making these rigid hold down command or control click on your layer mask now you have your selection from there go to filter other and go to minimum and then you're going to minimize the selection make sure that you have roundness on so that you can get to the decimals right so squareness you can't get the decimals roundness you can actually adjust the selection by decimal points so that makes it even more precise i'm going to do a minimum of about two pixels just so see how we go inside of the mask and that just releases any excess 
lines that could be there. So see how when we're really zoomed in, you have that like gray line. It could be a pink line. It could be a red line. It's just how the light leaks fall onto a. So that's a little key tip for when you guys are doing your masking. Once that's done, I make a group and I drag the layer mask into the group. And then I drag the photo into the group so that everything is contained within this group. Cause so now when I add an adjustment, I don't have to keep making clipping masks to the adjustment. Like if you can make a clipping mask if you right click and then you create a clipping mask, then it'll be clipped. That gets a little bit tedious. So if you put everything inside of a group, the group is controlled by the layer mask right here that you see. So now every time that you add an adjustment, it's going to be easy to just add anything that you would like without making a clipping mask and it's not going to affect anything beneath it or that's under the group. So with that being said, let's make a duplicate of the image and I'm going to make it into a smart object because I'm next I'm going to add camera raw. And once you add camera, raw, I want to be able to go back into camera raw if I need to. So that's what a smart object does. It lets you edit the adjustments that you've already made. If you don't have a smart object and you're just making adjustments on the layer, then you can never go back. So let's go to filter camera. Raw, and I'm going to show you guys what I usually like to do in camera. I like to boost my clarity for sure, keeping it somewhere under 25, but around 25 texture, same thing around 25. A lot of this goes just based off of what the image looks like from the outset. I'm going to play around with my curves, darken some shadows and bring the highlights up. So curves works as this is your shadow area. This is your midpoint area and this is your highlight area. It's just a continuous diagonal line that goes up and down. So yeah, just the bottom would be your shadows. Midpoint is gonna be your midtones. Highest points are gonna be your highlights. And if you get to the top or bottom, that's where your black points are. So now I'm lifting blacks. If I'm on the top, now I'm dropping down the whites and see how that's affecting his face. Let's drop down the blacks here when we slide up into the light part. Contrast, we can boost that for sure. I like a little bit of contrast. It's a difference between your shadows and highlights. And then for my oranges, since skin is usually on the orange side. I'm going to change my hue, make them a little bit more red. And I don't need to boost any of the saturations within this part yet. So I think that we're just going to boost the reds of him right now. Yellow wise, the jersey, I like to have a little bit more of a golden touch when I'm doing the Lakers. I think this is a little yellow. I think a little golden touch on that yellow. It always pays off. So if we hide this eyeball, since we made a smart object, that's before camera off. And that's after okay before after so the next step is doing the player retouching on these d'angelo russell mask i felt like there was no point to showcasing all of that because i just dropped the 2024 player retouch tutorial so go check that out as it is right here on the screen and check the link in the description all these masks are retouched i don't know if they're blended to exact t we'll see that once we put them on the canvas but before we can see if they're all matched together let's put them on the canvas of where i think they're going to go for the poster design so i'm going to go up to file new and i'm going to create a document it's going to be 2000 by 2500 this is going to allow us to maximize resolution for any pc usually that can run 16 bit in rgb color if you need to make this a little bit shorter some other sizes you could use there are four by five Perfect for Instagram size are 1600 by 2000, 1080 by 1350, 1200 by 1500. But if you want to get that max quality when you're not only uploading to Instagram, say for your portfolio or Behance, 2000 by 2500 at 300 pixels per inch. Always try to use 300 pixels per inch unless you're going down to like the 1200s or 1080s. 16 bit and let's hit OK and create. Let's fill this with a black color. So going to solid fill color. And I'm gonna drop this to just very dark. Now let's get our mask over onto the canvas. So I'm just copying and pasting. Control C, Command Shift V, or Control Shift V to paste in place. I'm gonna see what works best for us. See how I have this blue outline trim? Not ideal. I'm gonna make a selection over those parts that I really have that blue edge. You get those parts where you get that blue tint edge, then go filter, other, minimum, and just drop it back so that it's not as harsh. What I wanna do is have this be really like a highlight image, just to showcase that D'Angelo Russell is a bright star. That's my idea here. So that's gonna be the main image. I definitely wanna get this 
dribbling mask down at the bottom. So when you're resizing a mask, you hit Command or Control T and that will bring you to the transform tool. Make sure that this is clicked and linked right here for width and height so that once you resize, everything is even. Especially with masks, you want to make sure that everything is even. If you hold down shift though, it will resize unevenly. Okay. For this case, and we're trying to move around humans, we don't want to mess around with their anatomy too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing until I find a composition that I can start to work with. I'm going to go to the opacity and drop the opacity of this layer because I believe that this is going to be more of a surrounding effect more than a like, mask that you're going to really see straight in your face. I want to definitely get his name on here and for that and the first text that I want to have on here is I want to have like d on here. Why not? It's his name. Goes perfectly. I'm going to hit command A and I'm going to change this to Montserrat. This is like the GQ type type font. So I think it's going to go well with it because it's a vibe like a magazine it gives me that vibe. So I feel like d is a person that you would definitely see in a magazine and he has been on magazine. So I feel like it fits right with him. Another thing that I want to feature is a little bit of a nostalgic type of thing where he says, like I never left. So I want to have this in a cursive type font. So let's try, let's try to use Tuesday night first. Like I never. And what you got to do when you're trying to do text, you just got to play around like I never left give it a little bit of a tilt. So what you see right here is everything that I have in terms of framing. So I typed out DLO with the text tool. So I use the type tool right here, horizontal type tool. And I just typed out DLO. Okay. So what font am I using? I'm using Montserrat black. And this is the font that is used within like, you know, magazines like GQ. So it's a very similar font to that used a rectangle tool. So use your rectangle tool right here with the U shortcut and you can drag out a rectangle. And then what I did is I hit command T or control T and I shifted it just like that. Then for this text right here, I used a text type text tool. So I click and I drag and you can make your own box. And then with the box, I had left aligned it so that it's on the left side of the canvas every time that the indent happens. And then with this one, I just was playing around with a font called Tuesday night and d -Lo has famously said, like I never left after he had a big game back on the Lakers. The background that I'm using is very dark, but not, not hitting black. If you can go a little bit higher than black, I would always suggest that it just gives it a little bit more of a professional look when you are picking that color. And if you ever want to just keep moving things around, just hit command T. Make sure that this link is right here on your width and height so that once you're moving it, it's moving it symmetrically. If it's unlocked, then you're going to be moving things non-symmetrically unless you hold down shift. I'm going to make a subtle design on the side of the paragraph. I'm going to make a subtle design, see if I like it. So we're going to the rectangle tool again, holding it down and making a square type of thing. So try to get that aligned like that. And I'm going to fill it with purple, move it closer, bring it down like so. And then we're going to go over to the properties of it. So if you don't have your properties window, just go to window and then go to properties. Mine is already there. So I hit properties, right? And then you're going to drag and make this a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit more curved. Gives it a little bit of sauce. I think it should actually be on the left, right side though like a subtle border. I found a signature of D'Angelo Russell from the Lakers. So I really like that photo and I'm going to put just his signature on the design somewhere. So right here is the signature. How I'm going to get this off of the actual canvas is I'm going to go to select and then you're going to go to color range. We've used this before, but this time we're going to actually choose sampled colors. Now I want you here this eyedropper as well. Make sure that it's on the plus eyedropper and we're going to click simple colors within this part of the, the signature so that we can separate it and only take the signature from the card. Simple but effective. 
So once you have that, hit OK, and then you're going to make a layer mask and then delete everything around that. So use the selection tool. So this is the rectangular marquee selection tool. So use this. So you're going to make this selection around that. We're going to right click this layer and convert it to a smart object and then hit the layer mask icon and then you'll have this as just the signature and we're going to convert to a smart object once again and then you're going to go to image trim transparent to pixels and there you go now you have his signature let's just paste it on top and i'm going to put it like down here go to your hue and saturation click and clip the hue and saturation desaturate it then go to levels and drag this slider to the left now you have his signature in the corner like that and I feel like that'll be pretty cool by the end of this right up here on the top. I want to make this like a loading bar. So what I'm going to do is go to the rectangular tool and I'm going to have the fill actually on white for this one. No stroke again. And we're going to just drag it this way. This should be pretty good size for it. Then you're going to hit the duplication. So you're going to hit command J on the rectangle and then work on the bottom rectangle. Add a stroke of white to the outside and we can bring the stroke to like I'll just type in one for now and then we can see type in a stroke of one so once you have that stroke of one on this rectangle make sure that your fill is off on the bottom rectangle now you have the top rectangle with no stroke on the outside and then see if I drag this left or right when I'm in the command control so command T or control T and then drag it left drag it right see I have that loading bar effect and what I want to do though is I want to actually make my own shape here so i'm going to go to the polygonal lasso tool hit that we're going to just click on around here and then drag it diagonally and then come back to the center hit the layer mask icon hit command i or control i and now i have a loading bar if you want to extend it at any point you can always adjust your layer mask so i could just say, hey, I wanna fill it a little bit more. You can make that selection shape and then hit delete if you have black on top. If you have white on top and you wanna make the shape fill in more, it would be option or alt delete to fill that shape. Cause remember that white reveals, black hides with layer mask. Another effect that I want to use is I want to use a star to be the epicenter of the d -Lo because I feel like it'll be a little bit more interesting. So I have a star vector shape. I'm gonna be including this star vector shape for you guys. So do not worry. So you're gonna just gonna control and transfer this one, transform this one to be the epicenter of the O. So go to that rectangular tool and make this have no fill. And then just make it have a fill that you're gonna be able to see. So like red or something is fine. And then bring the fill up to something visible like that. Now with the D low, make a layer mask on it. And then you're going to go back to the star shape command click the star shape go to the d -Lo text and hit delete when you have white on top see how that's going to be around the outside of the star so now the only problem that we have is the outside of the star and to do this i'm just going to add a white layer underneath and i'm going to hit command shift i and we're going to fill this part with white and i'm literally just painting on a layer with white so now go back to the star shape and we're gonna fill the stroke with white. We have D low, okay, with the star. I'm digging these two other star shapes and I also hid the like D low signature so that we can just see a little bit more of the canvas right now. So I put one underneath the the jump in D low. It kind of looks like a floor for him. And then just behind here, this looks like another cool detail. Then I'm going to just change and make these purple as well. Just fit in the vibe fit in that flow. I'm going to start to work on this background uh, mask more now next. What I'm going to try on it is a gradient map and see if I like it. So go to the solid fill color, a gradient map, and we're going to actually do a clipping mask. So hold down alt or option and then clip when you see that arrow, see the arrow, clip that to the mask. How gradient map works is it works off of shadows to highlights. So you want to gradually go from your shadows to highlights and you can pick any colors in between you can pick any shades in between whatever you'd like so i want this to be dark in the background but i want to have it looking a little bit cooler and maybe adding some purple on it some purple type of highlights i can play around with so you see i'm just picking you don't want to go down and in between highlights and shadows you just want to make sure you are being consistent with how bright something is so see how every time i add a color no matter what the shade hue saturation is 
I try to make so, make sure that it is brighter than the one to the left. So this one will definitely be brighter than the last. And that's how you can make a consistent gradient map. Now, if you want to play around and a great way to, to play around is changing and inverting the gradient map. For right now, I just want to make it clean so that it can stand out and then I can go in and conquer what I need to do. So I really think this is a pretty cool look right here. If you ask me, now that I like that so much, we might just get rid of the text box itself. I don't like the bottom of it, but let's just look at how we constructed this. So I started with a dark color. So this is like black. Then I went to dark purple, lighter than that purple. Then we go up to a midish purple, a mid brightness purple, a lot of saturation though keeping the colors popping. Then we go to this yellow that's very bright, another yellow that's very bright, but with desaturated and then to white to finish it off. Not a fan of the bottom, because I'm gonna duplicate this gradient map and clip it again. The only thing I want to do though is have it on the bottom half so that the bottom half can be more of a purple instead of yellow. So I'm gonna invert the gradient map, use my brush painting low hardness, and I'm gonna have this be darker. So I'm just picking a similar color that I see. that and I might flip these so that this is a little bit darker on the bottom and you can move these sliders to make a different shade and feather just like I'm doing right there I'm gonna add some exposure bring it down and now I'm going to paint black on my layer mask so make sure you're on black Drop your flow down, and I'm gonna uncover a lot of the D-Low. I'm gonna hide this text too. Now that I'm liking this mask, I don't need that text. All right, so this is gonna be something that you're gonna have to take your time on once again, like play retouching. I'm going to make sure that the lighting is on point with this D'Angelo Russell piece. So I'm gonna hide these layers, and I'm gonna start one by one on each mask to make sure that it's really starting to blend in with the scene. So what I like to do is, once again, command click, group, and we're gonna put these masks in groups. So in going one by one, this is the reason why, every mask is matching the vibe of the scene. So the vibe of the scene is more of a purple. So he's looking a little bit orange. So I'll go to color balance, and I'm going to make him slide, see how I'm on the midtones, sliding him more to the blue side of the yellow and blue slider, and then on the cyan red we're gonna drag him a little bit more to the red so that's gonna give him a more purplish tone right off the bat then what i like to add is an exposure layer and drop down your exposure basing it off of the back mask the light's gonna be hitting him from top down on the right side so what i'm gonna do is follow that same pattern and see how i'm recovering the light from the top down on the right side have your flow very low like 20s and then have your hardness on you know you could even go back to zero on your hardness play around with your hardness as you see fit but do a little bit of lighting on your subject to bring them to life keep in note that black hides white reveals once again you press x to shift your color see how i'm pressing x and i my colors are shifting rapidly if i am painting with black i'm going to reveal more of the light back onto him if i paint with white i'm going to reveal more of the mask which is dark a dark mask so it's going to keep covering him darkly Something you'll find success with as well is when you're putting adjustments on, per se, like your color balance, you can literally take your color balance and copy it. And then once you add your new layer on and you put that into its own group, you put that into its own group. When you add your color balance, it'll just be the same and look pretty similar. You might have to adjust it a little bit as not every photo is the same. It'll be pretty close to the same colors and tones as the previous mask. The same works for if you want to make anything brighter. So I can add an exposure layer bring the brightness up and then invert the mask. And once I paint on with white, it's going to make the mask brighter. And you might need to use this if you really wanna highlight some points on the mask. All 
All right, so now after your design gets to this point and you feel like you did a pretty good job on lighting using your exposure, using your color balances and really just putting everything into its own group. What I want you to do is come up to the top of your project and add a color lookup panel. So go to the semicircle, add the color lookup. And what color lookups do is they change the vibe, tone, or feel of a project. So with this load 3D LUT, you can use my digital marketplace shopscope.com to get these LUTs that I will be using on this project file. I took my time to create lookups that are geared for sports designs and sports posters. So I'm gonna try Cinematic Pop first, and that one looks pretty cool. But I'm gonna cycle through a couple. That's what you wanna do when you're using LUTs is just cycle through a lot of your looks and you'll just find one that you're like, okay, that's the one I wanna use. We'll go with Super Pop. You can always cycle around the layer styles as well with these, which is really cool and can give you some unique looks. I'm gonna go in over here and experiment with changing the color of this star. So I gotta click on the layer, that would help. And I'm gonna change the color of this star just to add a little bit more color balance, color dynamicism. And then let's add a layer right above the background and choose a similar purplish tone, drop our flow, make sure our flow is low. If you hold down option or alt, you can color pick around the subject and around your canvas. And I like to just do one of these like soft haze layers. It just brings everything together and just starts lifting up the project a little bit. I'm gonna bring my flow up though. And just keep painting until you feel satisfied with the layer. Let's see what it looks like when we fill that star in. That's pretty dope. Let's see what it looks like when we fill it in with black though. Okay, that's something I can rock with. Let's drop the opacity back of that layer that I was playing on with the colors. To about 64. And I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to this d -low mask. So I'm just gonna paint on with black just to have a little bit of a gradient. So that he's not just like rigid at the bottom. It'll just see how it looks a little bit more professional. I found a color lookup that I also like called soft warming. This is just a default one actually. So I like this one and I'm trying out the blending modes. Luminosity actually looks pretty cool for it. So these stars are so rigid and kind of boring. So you see, I added a little bit of an inner shadow to them. So if you wanna add an inner shadow, you go to effects and you hit inner shadow, okay? So I'm just gonna play off the inner shadow that I already have on this one to show you what I did. Inner shadow, you can actually just change the blending mode to be linear dodge so that it actually becomes like an inner highlight. That's what I like to do when I'm using inner shadow instead of using the outer glow or inner glow because I don't really like those. So I change it to linear dodge and then I change the color to, see, I just picked a very similar color to what the star already was. My opacity is on 100. And then in your preview tab right over here, right on the right where my mouse is, you can see what this is going to do to your shape. So that's how I created this little glow effect on the star to make it a little bit more interesting. And the second thing that I'm gonna do is use a displacement map in order to make it more interesting as well. So I'll include the displacement map with this project file so you guys will have everything to go. But what I'm gonna do is convert to a smart object and I'm gonna go to filter, distort, displace. And displacement maps work in a way where if you have an image that you've already saved as a PSD, it uses that image and the information from it to displace any object however you want to scale it. So my horizontal scale, I wanna give it about 35 just to test out and vertical scale will leave at 10. And then I just go to where I have my displacement stored and we'll use Castle Scope 3 and see it's gonna give it a little bit of a little bit of a shift so it's a little bit more interesting. So once I'm on this group, I'm gonna add a layer beneath and I'm gonna add a solid color on a dark tone. So let's just go with like almost black. Invert the tone. So we're gonna make a shadowing mask on the floor. So see how this is just super flat. And once I color, like it's it's showing color, but it's all really just straight on. So I wanna make the brush direction go to the ground. Right click, and then I'll go and shift this all the way down to the floor. And then I'm just going to paint on the shadow now that way. Make sure your hardness is set to about zero. Black hides, white reveals the mask. And that's fine. Now on this d -low dribbling mask, I'll just add a layer. And I'm just gonna use dark black. So go press D to go to your default colors and then I'm just gonna paint black on 
his feet a little bit. I found this light grunge texture, so let's just go and resize this. Let's put it on screen blending mode. That'll work. All right, so I found some palm tree textures. I'm gonna try and bring them in and put them in the right places. Doesn't have to be anywhere in particular, but you always just wanna find that right spot that feels like it's gonna balance the scene out. So obviously the palm trees don't look good if they're just sitting there like that. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna add a gradient map. Clip the gradient map to the subject, pick similar colors once again, like we had already done before. Maybe I'll try yellow, let's see. Ooh, okay. And then we drag this slider. We can get more purple, less yellow. I'm gonna make this a little brighter. I'm just gonna copy and paste this gradient map because I'm gonna use the same one. So copy and then paste, same gradient map right there. If I ever wanna change it, I can just go boom, boom. Let's make that one a little darker, how about it? That's the beauty of Photoshop. Copy and pasting effects very simply, very easily. Another thing I wanna do is this ball is kinda sticking out. So, Let's try and play around on the color of this basketball as well. And what I would do here, since this is more precise, is use my pen tool and go around. So clicking with the pen tool, make a selection. If you want to click and, and curve a pen tool, you click and then you drag. So be pretty precise with it. The more that you use the pen tool, the better you're going to get. I'm giving you guys just a lot of nuggets on tools to use and what I use throughout. This is why this is gonna be very helpful when you guys have the actual project file. So definitely make sure you download the project file before getting into this project. Right click once you're done with that and then you're going to add it to a new selection. And then you're gonna hit delete when you have black on top. I'm gonna to play around with curves in here. So I'm gonna add a curves layer. I'm gonna add three points. So there's a midpoint. I'm gonna add the shadow point and I'm gonna add the highlights. Now I wanna bring the midpoint up because I want this to be a little bit brighter, but I can also boost my shadows a little bit as well and highlights just so that we get a little bit more punch out of this. I'm gonna add in some winding down text. So I'm gonna add, type with the same font, Montserrat black. And we're gonna type over here and we're just gonna put LA, first off, let's fix the kerning a little bit because these letters are touching. The kerning is right over here, your VA. This is how you separate the letters a little bit more. So see how I separate the letters? Zero will probably work or it's a little bit close. Let's go with 40, 40 is fine. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, bring it underneath and we're gonna write Lakers. But I'm not really feeling that for the LA. So what I'm gonna do is try it out with Tuesday night. And I'm gonna put Los Angeles in cursive font. I'm just trying to find that perfect look, perfect spot for that text. That looks pretty good. So we could bring the signature back. Maybe you put it on soft light overlay. Let's just try it out with soft light, just like that. See how you have a little bit of rigidness on the palm tree edges. Let's add a little bit of blur to it. 0.5 is fine. So on camera raw, what I like to do and what I had done is I go to my browse tab and I always am looking around in the browse tab for what could be a great look for my piece. In this case, I used Vintage 4. I thought that it gave it just a nice cool feel with lifted shadows. So I started to bring that on and then I dropped my shadows a little bit more and brought my highlights up on the curves in the curve. As far as my color mixer, my, my reds were kind of blown out. So I dropped my reds down a little bit more to have them a little bit more unison with the piece and fit the vibe. And then I'm just over here in the hue tab, playing around on my hue for the skin tones. Yellows, I can always play around with these and just make them look really, really nice, really clean. Greens, aquas, there's not really much of those. Purples you could play around with if you want and adjust those however you see fit. 
for my color grading, my midtones are a little bit towards the teal, shadows are a little bit towards red actually, and highlights stayed in the middle, but I brought the highlights up just a bit. Added sharpening at 38 and added some grain onto the piece. So at this point, you guys should have leveled up your Photoshop skills following along with this tutorial and having the project file right in front of you. Man, that's some key insights that I'm giving you guys. If you weren't following wrong with the PSD, make sure you get the PSD so that you can really dive in and see everything that I'm doing. The layers are all named, the groups are all named, so download it down below, man. These types of videos take a while to make and edit, but I know how important it is to upgrading your craft and really helping you guys level up as designers. So if you liked it, it would be huge if you hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on so that you know whenever I upload some new videos. This year in 2024, I'm going to be giving you guys a lot of tutorials and how to's to upgrade yourself as a designer. Until next video, it's been Calso Scoped. Stay scoped, y'all. Peace.